Good morning, everyone. As always, place a cross on first, no matter what time of day it is, no matter what's going on in your life. That's what you are, a follower of Christ. Put your cross on first. It's a small saying, but it makes so much sense. Putting your cross on first is something you do every morning. Get ready. Because when you go out in this world, no telling what you're going to face. But if you put Christ first, he's going to go before you. Remember that. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, I thank you for waking me up this morning. Thank you for giving me another chance to get it right. As you continue your work on me, my wife, our children, those of you we come in contact with, Lord Jesus, our loved ones, our foes, our friends, anybody. If anybody want to tell us something that's sent by you, let them say it. If we got to say something that's sent by you, let us say it. In Jesus' name we pray. Again, allow me to bring forth this word as you want me to bring it forth for our understanding and our truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today I'm going to read from Luke chapter 9. But when I was praying, a word popped up. Disobedience. Disobedience. Just got to say it. It's maybe something for somebody, maybe for me later. Disobedience. And then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. All right. I just said disobedience. So what obedience mean? Let me read that one more time. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. He just gave you a rhetoric to go by. And he said it to them, take nothing for your journey, neither staves, nor scrip, neither bread, neither money, neither to have two coats apiece. And whatsoever house you enter into, there abide and thence depart. And whosoever will not receive you when you go out of that city, shake off the very dust from your feet for a testimony against them. Basically what he's saying right now, I will provide everything for you. You don't need nothing. Just do what I tell you. Be obedient to what I tell you to do. And they departed and went through the towns preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. He told them what to do. They went out and did it. So if God's telling you to do something, you go out there and do it. If he tells you to do it, guess what? He'll give you power to do it. Being disobedient may stop somebody from being healed, but being obedient may have somebody turn their life over to Christ, have somebody heal from their illness, have somebody heal from their sickness, have some devil cast out of their life. Being obedient will cause that because he tells you what to do. He tells me, he tells you, he tells everybody else what to do. If you are a follower of Christ, he speaks to you and he tells you what to do. Do you understand? Oh, Lord have mercy, Jesus. I feel the debate. Actually, that's it. That's it. That's it. I was going to read further, but hey, the Spirit gave me my answer. Yesterday, people, I did a video in regards to what you do affect others. Hmm. And what you don't do affect others. Why? Why? Because you are called to do something. You're called to make an effect on the people around you. Do you understand? If he sends you out, he sends you out to do something for him. So guess what? When you wake up in this morning, in the morning, and God sends you to work, he gives you breath in your, in your body. He gives your legs power to still work. He gives your hands power to steer that steering wheel. Guess what? He has something for you to do. It's time for you to be obedient and do it. Let's go back to yesterday. You got to test the spirits now. I'm talking about this again. The enemy walks around too. He tries to distract you from what God wants you to do. Or he tried to do you, have you do something that God doesn't want you to do. Go back to David. Number the people. Satan provoked David to number the people and David did it. All right. So you already know it's another spiritual energy out there that's trying to get you to do things that God doesn't want you to do. And when you do disobe be disobedient to him, it's not going to be good. 
It's not going to be good for you. It's not going to be good for those who he want to want to send your way or those who he want to send towards you. You understand? Does it make sense? What you do affects others and what you don't do affects others. When Jesus gave his disciples missions, he told them exactly what he wanted them to do. The Holy Spirit talks to you and it tells you what he wants you to do on a daily basis. One thing about that Lord's Prayer, I'm going to tell you how powerful it is. I don't need to tell you. You know how powerful it is. It puts you into God's will. You understand? To use you as he seems fit. So it's up to us to be obedient. The more we let him use you, the more you will be used. The more you rebel against him, the less you're going to be used. You are out here to do what? Preach the gospel. Cast out. I give you power over all devils. So if we give you power over all devils, what do we need to be doing? Recognizing where the devils are. Recognizing who needs that exorcism. <laughs> you understand? Because he's going to give you the power to do it. God said, when you go out, when they deliver you up, don't meditate on what you're going to say. Because the Holy Spirit is going to give you the words to say. So the Holy Spirit is going to give you what you need for each mission. All you have to do is accomplish the mission. How do you accomplish mission? You step out in faith. You understand? You believe that God sent you to this person to do whatever it is that he commands of you. He said if they don't receive you, dust off your feet at their doorsteps. And guess what? You'll know who don't receive you. You'll know that too. How do you know that? Because he told you. He said if they don't receive you, Dust your foot off as a testimony against that city. I'm not gonna answer this word, a testimony against that person. I am, I'm done. I, I, did, I tried to do what God wanted me to do. Time to move on to the next. You understand? I'm not gonna keep trying to beat it in your head. I tried, you didn't want it, so let me move on. You understand? Does it make sense to you people? Obedience disobedience. Rebellion is like the sin of witchcraft. If you call yourself to be a Christian, you need to step out and do what God calls you to do. Because if not, you're rebelling against him. If not, you're being disobedient to him. To what he called you to do. What he called you to do. You know, sometimes God's mission is not as hard as you make him to be. Sometimes you just want to be, sometimes he wants you to just be in places. If God says he's going to give you peace, not as the world gives peace, He's going to give you peace, not as the world gives peace. I'm going to give you my peace. So if God is giving you his peace, guess what? Where you go, you're going to bring peace. Sometimes you're going to bring peace without even saying a word. Just being in the midst. Just being there. You understand? How do I know this? Trial and error. You understand? Disobedience. Obedience. You understand? That's how I know. Because I call myself a follower of Christ. If I call myself a follower of Christ, I need to know these things. And you need to know these things too. You understand? It's not hard. It's not hard. It just takes time. It takes patience. Like I said, being a Christian is not something you learn overnight. It's something you do every day. And you grow in it. If you don't do it, you lose it. You understand? People, Christians are always like, I don't, I want the gift of healing. I want to be able to cast out devils. But then God show you a devil and you run from it. You understand? You run from it. You don't step into your anointing. You don't try to see what God can use you for. You think God sends people your way for you to push them away? You think he sends people your way to say, hey, I know a healer. Go to Dr. Monroe and he's going to give you some pills. He said, I gave you power to heal the sick. So if you send somebody your way, what you need to be trying to do, you understand? You need to be trying to utilize the gifts that he's given you. You understand? He said, how much more will he give the Holy Spirit to those who ask of him? You being evil know how to give good gifts to your children? How much more can I give the Holy Spirit to those that call and ask of me? You got to understand what he's asking you to ask for. Ask for those gifts. 
And if you ask for it, he's going to give it to you. Because why? God's will is to have people healed. God's will is to have devils cast out. So soon after that, he went somewhere and a dude's child was vexed with an evil spirit and the devil would come upon him and cast him into the fire, foaming at the mouth like he'll have a seizure. And Jesus, to prove a point, to show you, I'm going to do the will of my father, you can do these same things, he healed the little boy. He healed the little boy. You understand? So what are we supposed to be doing sometimes? Or should I say, every time he said on your mind to do so. Disobedience. 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 Disobedience, people. Nobody likes to talk about that. But when I read the Old Testament, I mean the New Testament, I see what he sends his disciples out to do. And you are my brothers and my sisters if you do what I command of you, then you are what I say you are. You understand? If I say you're a healer, you're a healer. Even if for that one day, if God compels you to go to the hospital and pray over somebody, be obedient and do it. Don't worry about who's around. Don't worry about it. Lord, I never prayed over somebody in front of people before. Today is today. Lord, I never prayed in a group before. I know how to pray in church. But I don't know how to pray in public. I don't know how to pray when you're on, on demand, when you tell me to. I'm afraid. Hmm. That's what the enemy wants you to be. Afraid to utilize the gifts that God gives you. He ready to tell somebody to go to the doctor. You understand? He ready to tell you want to you want to heal folks, you want the land to change, but you're not doing anything to change the land. My wife put me on a song. That's so on point, and I love it. We want our coffees in the lobby. <laughs> wow. Church has come a place of gathering to drink cookies and milk. I mean, to eat cookies and drink milk and coffee. You understand? It's come a place of light shows. Church has come a place of just like a club to me. You understand? It's not a remnant of what it's supposed to be. You understand? Healing. No, it's all about dancing and singing and drinking lattes. You understand? But it starts right here. You understand? We got missions right in front of you. That's what he said in the song. You got missions everywhere. Well, we sending missions overseas. And we see all these people around here that needs healing. And we're just not stepping out to the obedience to do so. Guess what? I'm going to put myself in that same category. Because I guarantee you I'm not doing all that God wants me to do. I'm no different from you. When I make these videos, it's for me too. You understand? Because one day God make a pay of me to come back on here and listen to it and be like, Houston, I told you. Using yourself. I told you what to do. You understand? I told you what to do, boy. Get to it. I gave you the gifts to do it. Do it. Do it till you're satisfied. You understand? If you don't use it, you lose it. You understand? If you don't use it, you lose it. To whom much is given, much is required. That's why you seek God early. That's why I said in the morning, you seek God. You ask to put your, you put your cross on first. You take up your cross and follow me and I will make you fishers of men. What's a fisher of men? When you go out and you go fishing, what's your goal? I know every time you ain't going to catch fish. And God knows this. Every time you ain't going to catch men. Sometimes you go fishing and be out there for hours and catch nothing. But do you stop fishing because one day you don't catch nothing? Or do you, if you love fishing so much, you go again. And hopefully you'll catch something the next day. So I'm thinking, I'm making you a fisher of men. Am I saying you're going to? catch something every day? Are you going to catch a man every day? Or are you going to catch a woman every day? Or are you going to heal a woman every day? No, sometimes you're not. It is how it is. But sometimes you're going to find that one out of the 99 that needs you. Because you work for who? Christ. Who you work for again? I'm trying to reiterate. Who you work for? I'm a Christian. All right. Why call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things I command of you? Oh, it's, it's all about gifts and stuff. That's cool, too. 
What about the spiritual gifts? You being evil know how to give good gifts. How about spiritual gifts? How about bestowing some spiritual gifts on people? You understand? How about that? How about that? Hmm. People, I love you. Christ loves you too. He loves you enough to wake me up in the morning. I'll wake you up in the morning and have you do what he wants you to do or have me get on here and do a video. He loves you that much. And he got people out here doing what they're supposed to be doing. And I'm not the only one. It's called obedience. I ask the Lord all the time. Lord, I do a video almost every day. Sometimes they get tired. It's like it's not reaching anybody. And do it anyway. Get up and do it again. Get up tomorrow and do it again. Get up the next day and do it again. Do it whenever I command you to do it. Do it till I'm satisfied. <laughs> Says the Lord. Do it. Tell him I say, you're not doing it to please people. You're doing it for me. You understand? One thing I know about this YouTube, one thing I know about these videos, when I'm dead and gone, guess what's going to remain? That word. Let somebody come in and delete my profile. And I doubt that. You understand? Just like Facebook, when you pass away, people done passed away on Facebook. People done went on to rest. And their page is still there. Everything that they've done in their life, everything that they've said, I ain't gonna say done, everything that they've said and spoken is still there. It's still floating around in the internet. You understand? Guess what? That's great. They know you can leave a legacy of Christ. Be careful what you post. Cause that's what you're gonna be remembered by. You understand? That's what you're gonna be remembered by. What you do here. You understand? It's not about you. It's about Christ. So what are you trying to be remembered by? As a follower of Christ. You're trying to be remembered as a saint. Not a devil. I don't know what the opposite of saint is. Uh, I just say devil. You understand? There are saints. That mean they're the opposite of saints floating around out here too. They don't mind doing their father's work. They're going to stay doing it. If they don't mind doing their father's work, you need to step in your anointing and do your father's work. Stop waiting for somebody else to do it. You understand? Stop waiting on the preacher. When you are supposed to grow as a, a body of the Christ, you're supposed to be part of the church. You need to step, step into your anointing. What's wrong with the world today? They go and they trust in nothing but the, the preacher. Okay, we got a high priest now. A high priest that endowed everybody with a gift if they want it. Stop trusting in the preacher. You are that present help in a time of trouble. The Lord said, I am a present help in your time of need. If he uses you, you are a present help in somebody else's time of need. You understand? Guess what? The church stands still. The actual building cannot move. It's right there. Everybody's not able to reach that building. Everybody ain't gonna go to that church. You understand? Everybody that's gonna walk up and go to that church like everybody's just gonna come to you. That's what you're expecting? You're expecting everybody to come to you? No. Sometimes you come to them. Sometimes they come to you. It's not always the same. You understand? Let me pause for a second. I will continue, people.